Hey y'all, this is uh, the Mrs. Wolf Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead. These are cushions from an old love seat we have down in our rec room. But as you can see, these cushions are not in the greatest of shape. So I'm going to recover them. Now, I want to start this by telling you that every stick of furniture in my house is second hand. And I'm sure if you had a closer look, you'd see you would see. Now what I'm going to do is this is a really odd shape and it's stupid because they put a zipper in so you supposedly be able to take a cushion out but the cushion was sewed right through. This cover was sewed right through the cushion so you had to tear this. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to make a slip cover by taking this apart and here's my fabric. I have two layers of it and I have enough to do all four cushions on the couch. On the front of these, I'm going to make the front longer than the back because I'm just making a slip cover so that um, I can just tuck it under when I'm done. All I use these old covers for is a pattern. I don't re actually redo it with zippers and all that stuff. I just make slip covers for each individual cushion. It is so much easier. I will be back when I've got this all apart. Okay, now what we have here is just the one piece of the cushion and where it was puckered on the curved edges I just cut a split because I'm going to make this as true to the original size as possible and then I'm going to fold it back and make a pucker like it had before. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to pin this down to my fabric. Now you only need one piece for all four cushions. Start For starters, you want to make sure you have two pieces of fabric with the wrong sides facing each other so that you have a true uh, pocket. And I've got another piece I'm going to do the same with, but one of these I'm going to make longer than the other. So let's start with the longer one. Now, to do that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and pin these down to the fabric in a couple of strategic places so that it'll hold still while I am cutting it out. Now like I said, every stick of furniture in my house folks is second hand or hand me down. And for the simple reason is, is I can't see spending a thousand dollars or three or four thousand dollars on a love seat couch and chair when I can go to a yard sale or a secondhand shop and buy it for between ten and forty dollars and recover it myself or just make a slip cover for it. Now these are to hold the back cushions to the, to the corners of the upper part of the couch and I will make those but when I'm cutting this out I'm just going to put a little mark to show where the loops are and I'll just draw that on with pen and actually I will do that right now. Loop and loop. This part's going to be cut off. It's, I just want to know where it's going to be. And then we're going to cut this out and we're going to leave extra because obviously you can see there's been a piping here and so we want to leave enough room for a good seam because originally the piping would have eaten that right up. Now we'll be back when I have this all cut out. Now as you can see here, I have left a really nice flap so that, because these are going to be the fronts of each cushion. One's going to be facing this way and one's going, one's going to be facing that way and one's going to be facing this way. What I'm going to do is when I have the backs sewn on these, this flap is going to tuck under the cushion and up the back or across the back with a piece of Velcro. But as you can also can see, I've left an inch to an inch and a half edge all the way around. You can always cut some extra fabric off, but if you cut it too small, it's wasted material. By the way, don't throw away your scraps. Rag rugging, remember, we'll be back. Okay, folks, I have my fabric piece laid out. And I know this is cheating, but this is the front piece because it's got the longer flap. I'm just going to set this cushion on here. Now, and I'm going to put the other piece right over top, and we're going to pin it together. Once this is sewn together, this will make a flap that you'll just come up and tuck up under here, under the seam and it'll be like a pillowcase. Because pretty much that's all we're doing. 
Now we want to make sure that this seam is going to be fairly centered, so we want to make sure this is got the same amount of distance all the way around it, and we're just going to start pinning the two pieces of fabric together around the cushion. It's all, almost so easy, it's almost cheating. I want this to be snug. Now normally if I was sewing the edges I would put a pin this way, but right now I want to get it to form to the pillow. So I am doing it this way. I'm putting them lengthwise. Alright, we'll be back when I have this all pinned together. I just want to show you, remember those puckered corners? We're just going to grab them, just like this, and I'm going to fold that there so that it's going to come down. And we'll put a temporary pin in there just to hold that pucker in place. And we're going to do the same with the bottom. We'll fold that back. We're just going to fold that over and put a pin in there so that when we sew these seams together, that will fit just Jim Dandy. We got our puckers matched up. Now we're going to put a pin crosswise to show where we want to sew it. And the fun part is, is when you buy secondhand furniture, folks, you're not spending a lot of money. Like I, I go to the back, I go to the fabric stores and I go into the back where the pallet tables are, where they have 75% off or, or whatever. And I dig. And I mean, I really dig. I think I got 20 meters of this because I've covered my couch with it, but I didn't make slip covers. I just made a throw. But I think I got 20 meters of this for $35 or some such ridiculously low amount. And for the price of the fabric and the price of the love seat, I'm going to get a beautiful new or newish love seat for about maybe $40. Anyway, we'll be back when this is all pinned together. Now, as you can see, I've got my edges all pinned together in a pocket. Now, what I'm going to do is I have made these pins as snug as possible. I don't know if you can see this to the fabric and I've got it pinned that way and I'm just going to fold this up like this and take a pen and just draw a line in the crease and this then I'm going to turn my pins around and I'm going to pin them the proper way and don't think I've forgotten about my loop I haven't I'm got, I've got to sew that up and then put it in this is going to be my sewing line I mean you can measure and you can do all that but let's face it, folks, I'm an 18-year-old teenager living at home and a body man for a husband. I ain't buying no Louis XIV. And I've got dogs, too. We're going to stick with the, the second-hand furniture. And if you'll notice also, these edges are still raw because once this is all sewn together, I'm going to hem this all the way around and I'm going to hem it across this seam so that it's extra strong. All right, now you can see I've taken the uh, cushion out. And now I'm taking my sideways pins and I'm putting them in the proper direction so that I can sew across them when it comes time to stitch. You can fairly easily reupholster your furniture if you know the tricks. Reduce, reuse, recycle, folks. Everything old is new again, right? We'll be back. Now I'm just going to show you I'm making those loops. And what these loops do is these loops go over the posts at the upper corner so that the cushion, the top cushion doesn't slide down into your lower back. So all I'm doing is doing a, a, a three fold like I do for my rag rugging. And I'm just going to fold that in to the center and then fold it again. And I'm going to pin it. And then I'm going to pin it in place. And I'm not going to bother stitching this loop along this seam until it comes time to actually put it in the chair. But I am going to pin it to the cushion cover so that I remember where it goes and that I will remember to add it in between the seam when it comes time to sew it together. Now you remember where those puckers are folks? At this corner right here? That's where one of the loops is going to be. And I'm just going to pin this right here so that we know it, what it's there for. All right, now I'm sewing the cover for the, top, the back cushions, the, the upper cushions. And here's that loop that I made that's going to, when I show you at the end, is going to hold the cushion in place. So what I'm going to do now is I had it pinned here so I could, I knew where it was going to be. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to insert the loop backwards inside 
the cushion so that when it comes turned inside out the loop will be like this. So we're just going to slip this in here amongst our folds. We're going to slip it in at the corner and we know it's the corner because that's where our fold of fabric is. I'm just going to slip this in here so that just the edge is coming through the sewing line. So then we take put this back together and we'll put our pin back. Now I can feel where the loop edge is. You can see it, but I can feel it. And I'm just going to go ahead and sew along my line, sewing through that loop. And I'm just going to take this off and show you what I'm talking about. So when we turn this cushion cover inside out, that loop is going to be on the corner in the seam and we can hook it over the ball of the post on the left seat. Now I just want to show you, this is my loop just for the sake of instruction. This is the, the fold that I use when I'm making my braided rag rugs. So I'm going to stitch this loop, uh, the seam, so that you can see. There, that's my loop. Alright, all I'm doing here is I'm folding the edge of the raw fabric over and giving it a zigzag stitch. Now, I just want to show you that I'm taking a strip of 6 inch fabric and I'm rolling a tube, a very thin, as thin as possible tube, and I'm just running it through a zigzag stitch to make myself a little strip of fabric. And I'm going to make, and when I'm done making them, I will show you why and I'm just going to cut along the edge it doesn't have to be fancy but it does have to be thin and if you're taking if 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 your couch cushions are one of those kind the horrendous kind like mine is that has buttons stuck stuck through both sides and they're a pain when you sit on them because if you drag your butt you're going to hurt yourself but uh, if, if you have those buttons on your cushions, just save a few of them, and I'll show you why. Okay, what I'm doing is, is I'm taking this cushion cover, this is the top cushion cover, I'm taking two of these little loops that I made, and I'm just sewing them somewhere along, about, a, about 18 inches apart on the front, which will probably be the back part of this cushion. And when this cushions together, I'm going to show you why I did that. All right, folks. Now we have put the cushion back into the um, pillowcase that we've made. And I've sewn the two loops on, the short piece. And what I've done is I've, you're going to tuck your pillowcase flap in nice and snug so that it fits comfortably. Now, nor, now in the past, what I've done is I've just left that pillowcase like that. But what happens is people snuggle in and they get comfortable on your cushions and, and the flaps pull out and they look untidy. So we've sewn our loops on and we're going to flip this over and if you, I don't know if you can see this really well, but what I've done is I've made a pen mark right on the cushion and I'm going to take some butcher string because that pen mark is going to go accommodate our loop. Remember those buttons I told you to save? We are going to sew those buttons on. Now, I don't know how to recover these buttons, and I'm sure I could figure out if I wanted to, but they're not going to be seen, so who really cares, right? So, if you want to get that fussy, figure out how to recover your buttons, or buy buttons that you can cover and make them look nice, that's fine. Now, we're not going to sew this button too tight, because we want it to have some give, so that it doesn't get pulled off. And we're just going to sew these buttons in place so that we can close the bottom of our pillowcase and keep it snug. All right, now we have our buttons in place and we're going to tuck this back under our cushion and we're just going to pull these up and Bob's your uncle. This is going to be, this is going to hold your cushion pillow on. And it's going to go to the back so no one's going to see it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this butcher string and we're going to make some stitches along here because this part of the cushion actually folds. 
So I'm going to take some of this butcher string and I'm going to make a few stitches that will be easy to take out when it comes time to take this off and wash it. Because yes folks, I'm making this so that we can take it off and wash it. Let's just push this darning needle through and I'm just going to make a stitch there. But what I'm going to do, see, is I'm just going to pull this up, how well you can see this. I've made a stitch through, through the here, and I'm just going to pull this up nice and tight and I'm going to tie it off so that we have a couple of stitches to accentuate where we want the pillow to have a crease. Now like I said, I could sew this, but when I take this cushion off, or this cover off, to wash, I only want to have to undo two or three of these little knots. And then you just, you just snip these off, and then you unbutton it, and you take it off, and you wash it, and then when you put it back on, you just take some butcher string and pop a stitch back, couple of stitches back through. Okay, there's the left cushion for the couch. There's the, the loop, and there's a loop on the other side that's going to hold it in place. It's buttoned down. We're going to have our pretty crease. Alrighty, folks. Here it is. One cushion. The lighting's really bad. I know, Bar. Two cushions. Loops go on, just like that. There you go, folks. As you can see, my dogs like to lay on my furniture, so I put this coverlet down to protect my new cushion covers. Okay, now my son's going to peel back that all the way so you can see what it looks like in better lighting and it turned out really well. Anyway, there it is folks.